Hey everyone, you know, I thought I'd just come on here real quickly and kind of talk about, you know, two things related to WWE. First of all, I want to talk about the whole Becky Lynch uh, situation. Um, there's no doubt that Becky is, well, uh, how do you put it, a badass baby face. You know, I think that's the best and plain way of looking at it. She is a badass baby face. Um, and to say that, you know, she's a heel, well, that's your opinion. I mean, you take a look at how certain things are booked, you know, for upcoming house shows and live events. And there is, and there is that old saying that cards subject to change. But when I look at the whole Becky thing with, with Charlotte, you know, as great as the storyline is, and it's as great as what they're doing with Becky is as well, I'm not trying to burst any bubbles here, but I want you to take a look at what Becky's main focus in all of this is. She wants to be the center of attention. And not that that's a bad thing. She's long overdue in doing that. But what I'm talking about, center of attention, she wants to basically, from what the storyline is saying, be the only one the spotlight should be focusing on right now. And, again, nothing wrong with that. But knowing how this company operates, even if they're turning out a good product like SmackDown Live and NXT and 205 Live and the Mae Young Classic and whatnot, knowing how this company operates... Again, I'm not trying... Now, look, I'm not going to try to jinx it because they do have competent writers doing exactly what they know what they're doing. Here's a kid. Well, like I was saying, sorry about that. There was a white cat on our porch. So, um, anyway, had to chase it off. Uh, but anyway, what I'm saying is that I'm not trying to jinx it or anything because... As a lot of people have been saying, you notice how good things can be for certain men and women on the roster, especially when you have competent writers. So, I'm not trying to jinx this whole situation with Becky, but just the way it's, well, it's not easy for any fan to say, but just the way it's being presented, it's all about Becky is... Becky just wants the spotlight. It's like Becky wants to be equally shown on the poster along with Charlotte, along with AJ, along with Brock Lesnar, along with Roman Reigns, along with Ronda Rousey. She wants that equality. She basically wants... She ba basically, that's, basically, guys, that's what it comes down to. I know I sound like I'm rambling. I'm a little tired. I did work today. Oh, I'm very tired. I did work today. But to me, that's what it sounds like it comes down to. That Becky Lynch just wants equal treatment. That's all she wants. She doesn't want to be treated superior and all that. She just wants the equal treatment and the justified treatment that is needed. In other words, if you're the champion, you. in other words, her argument is, hey, if you're the champion, the spotlight should be only on you. You should be the only one that gets the photo ops. You should be the only one that gets, you know, focused on, gets the spotlight on, on, and no one else except maybe your opponent. And that's a great message. That's a great story arc. But the way it's being played out right now, guys, is it's more about she wants equal treatment and justified treatment. It's like, I mean, if it comes down to it to where when this rivalry with Charlotte ends and it comes out that even if Becky's not champion afterwards and not saying she won't be, but let's say she doesn't have the championship and it comes out that all she was doing was trying to send the message of, hey, I do just as much as you do. I'm just as good as she is. We should have, I should have equal treatment as well. I should be on those posters alongside Charlotte, alongside Sasha, alongside Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles. I should be front and center or at least in some, in some area in that poster. 
you know, or in the promotional feed. That's basically when it comes. That's basically what it comes down to with Becky, is the fact that she wants that equal treatment. She wants to be in the promos. She wants to, you know, she wants to be in the promotional uh, material uh, marketing for an event or for whatever. She wants that because she feels she's deserved it. She's earned it. And there's no doubt she has. This, excuse me. The, and like I said, there's no doubt she has. But again, what I think is going to happen, and I know I'm about five minutes and 36 seconds in when I say this, but I think what's going to happen is in the end, when this rivalry is done, it's going to be revealed that all Becky wanted was equal treatment. That she didn't want to turn on Charlotte. She just got frustrated of being basically pushed to the back because of Charlotte. And all she wants is for Charlotte and the WWE to treat her and any other woman that's been part of this revolution equally. You know, put them on the poster. Make them part of the promotional marketing for an event. Give them that equal treatment. That's all it's coming down to, guys. That... That's all it's about, about giving them the equal treatment and that even if they're the champion, give them the justified treatment that the champion deserves. Give them the photo ops. Make sure they're the ones that get the photo ops and the interviews and stuff like that. Have them be the ones that go out out as ambassadors for you to promote your product or go on talk shows, stuff like that. That's basically what it is. It's about equal and justified treatment. That's what it's going to come down to, guys. And if they do it right, if that's the conclusion and they do it right, hey, it'll be worth it. But we'll just have to wait and see. But knowing this company, that's exactly where it's heading. That's exactly where it's heading. Now, let's talk about something else. Last night or yesterday, Deluxe Man, Alex who usually tries to do a live Raw review, over the past few weeks has not done that. Instead, he's done Q&As, he's done other things, things, he's done videos on other subjects and what have you. I mean, he'll talk about Raw, maybe mention it here and there, but that's about it. He doesn't want to associate with it anymore. So, basically, a hashtag I think Alex started... Um, I believe Alex started this. A hashtag was made called Raw Cleanse. Hashtag Raw Cleanse. And even I took part in that. And what this mainly is, I haven't watched the video in which he started this hashtag, but what it is, it's a, basically it's a message. It's a hashtag message to where, from what I can see, from what I can see, is we fans are cleansing ourselves of watching Monday Night Raw until it gets better. Until Monday Night Raw can be what it was before. That's basically what we want. It's what any fans want, whether they're hardcore or casual. It's not the fact that we don't respect what, w, what Raw has done for the WWE in the past. What we want is a show that even if it's three hours, we could tolerate. We can get through and enjoy. We don't want someone to be like, uh, let's see, uh, oh, tonight, uh, th- and no offense when I do that, no offense. But we don't want writers to like, duh, uh, Ronda does this now, and duh, Nikki Bella does this now, and duh, Roman Reigns fears another one, duh. And again, Lord, I don't mean any disrespect by that. Please forgive me, in your name I pray, amen. But that's basically what it looks like, or sounds like, or feels like to a lot of fans. And all we want is for them to correct the mistakes. Make sure things are done in a way that are consistent, that makes sense. You know, a good example of this is Drake Maverick, a.k.a. Rockstar Spud. Why is he with the Authors of Pain? Why did you shorten the Authors of Pain name to AOP? You know, why is he a heel manager on Raw, but a babyface man, babyface GM on 205 Live. What's the point? You need consistency. 
We want an explanation. Give us a reasoning. And you know what? If you're going to make Drake Maverick a heel, then continue that. Put the connection there to 205 Live and make him turn against the fans and have him favor the heel wrestlers, the heel cruiserweights over the baby faces. I mean, it's called consistency. That's all it is. And that's what fans want. They want consistency. They want some kind of logic placed in there. They don't want people taking whatever slimy goop they have and going like, and, and putting words or putting an idea on it and going like, okay, uh, oh, here's an idea. Uh, six man tag main event. Beep! Ah, oh, bullseye! We're gonna use that tonight. They don't want that. They want something that's consistent. You know what I'm saying? You know, one thing Alex brings up is the whole Braun Strowman beat Roman Reigns at Hell in a Cell. Why aren't you acknowledging that? You know, you need consistency there. You know, it's like... It's almost like WWE doesn't care anymore because they're getting this money deal. But you know what? They're going to have to care. They're going to have to care. You know why they're going to have to care? Because it's not going to be because of raw, hashtag raw cleanse. No, it's not going to be because of the hashtag raw cleanse. No. It's mainly going to be because if SmackDown is going to be the new A show because it's going to the Fox Network next year, they're going to have to get better. They're going to have to make Monday Night Raw better, especially those that are on Monday Night Raw, because it's pretty much a done deal that many of these men and women that are on Raw are going to be switching over to SmackDown to make it, to help make it the A show. But you know what's going to happen? Those Fox investors are not going to be interested in having those men and women superstars if there isn't a consistent balance, if there isn't consistent storyline. You know, it's like, you know, it's like do something is what we as fans have been wanting. And if you don't want us... Sorry. Like I said, if you don't if you don't want us to hijack your shows, you know, kinda give you a rebellious attitude, then don't give us a reason. Give us a reason to support you. Give us a reason to not have to start these hashtag um you know, raw cleanse or hashtag hashtag raw is dead or hashtag Raw is ruined, or hashtag Raw is Roman, or whatever. You know, you don't don't give us reasonings to do that, or hashtag Raw hijack. You know, don't give us a reason to do that. Give us a reason to support. But here's the thing, though. Yes, this hashtag Raw cleanse is trending. It is trending. It is getting up there. It's, word is spreading. Heck, if hashtag fire road dog can trend and get Brian, B. J., Brian G. James, you know, attention, if it can get his attention, if it can get Brian James' attention, then so could hashtag raw cleanse. But just like we saw with Brian James and his reaction to it, to that whole hashtag file road dog, it's going to be the same reaction he and some people that come out and maybe acknowledge raw, hashtag raw cleanse. It's going to be the same reaction. You know what it's going to be? As good as this hashtag to try to get things on raw better? You know what the reaction is going to be? Same as anybody else's. You don't like it. Why are you watching it? Or I guarantee uh, here, Here's the thing. Let's say Stephanie McMahon comes out and acknowledges hashtag raw cleanse. You know what she's going to do, being Stephanie McMahon? She's going to be like, oh, really? Well, if you don't like Raw, then why are you watching it? Why is it still a top program? Yeah, viewership is down, but why are you still watching it? Why is it still considered a success, even if viewership is down? She's going to manipulate 
her wording. She's going to choose the right words to really try to stick it to us so that we'll be like, oh, well, oh. And here's the thing, Stephanie McMahon, if you're listening, here's the thing. We don't want to have to have a superstar or someone like you or Road Dog or Triple H or whoever come out and try to justify the reasoning Raw is the way it is. And you can't bring up the whole, well, it's Monday Night Football season, so we got that going against us. No, you can't use that either. You can't use that either. And you can't use the excuse of, well, we're trying to make a family-friendly product, and if we go the route that fans want us to go, it's not going to be family-friendly, and all our partners and investors will leave us, and we'll have to find new partners and investors, da da da, da. So, so, So what if you have to? I thought you already had partners and investors even when you were TV-14. Even when you were in the ruthless aggression era, the attitude era. I thought you had those. But, again, here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing. You could start this whole hashtag Ross cleanse, and it can climb up trending on Twitter and social media and be a success and get the attention it needs for WWE to hopefully realize, okay, maybe we need to do something here. But again, just like with hashtag fire road dog, they're just going to brush it off. They're just going to look at it like, oh, well, this Delex man's just whining and crying because he can't get what he wants. Wah, 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 wah. He don't have the guts to watch three hours of Raw anymore. Wah, 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 wah. That's how they're going to look at it. And Alex, and Alex, no offense, I don't mean any offense when I say that, but that's how they view a fan like you. Like, basically, like I said, you can have a Stephanie McMahon come out, acknowledge it, and basically, in her own way, to try to tear down the fans, and, if you will, to be that, em- to basically try to emasculate the fans. In her own way, she'll say something like that. She'll kind of say and acknowledge something like that. Like, oh, well, these people don't have the guts to watch Raw. If they did, they'd see the bigger picture. <laughs> really? We see the bigger picture. And again, Alex, I don't mean any offense when I say that, but that's basically how they would view it. That people like you, me, OTR Essential, anybody else that has said the same thing over and over again, you know, you know, Don Tony, Kevin Castle, you know, Solomonster, Jason Solomon, you know, you know, we could start this hashtag raw cleanse, and like I said, it can get their attention, but all they're going to do is brush it off as us being nothing more than whiny little brats that don't get what we want. Because we don't have the guts to at least try to tolerate or watch raw and kind of try to understand what's going on. Try not to want this and that because we're hardcore wrestling fans, but instead try to look at the picture, try to look at the consistency and as to why this is happening. Again, hashtag raw cleanse is a good idea. And it's working. It's getting the attention it needs. But the truth is, WWE is just going to brush it off. And if anybody does respond, they're going to just basically respond in a way that basically calls us nothing more than whiny little babies that don't have the guts to watch Monday Night Raw and try to understand what's going on instead of letting our blinders blind us as to what they feel is the truth. Basically, that's what it's going to be. They're going to feel like, hey, we're letting our passion for that pre, that pure pro wrestling blind us to what's going on. It's like you're letting that you're letting that whole uh, NXT progress Lucha Underground blind you to seeing what's going on. You should at least attempt to enjoy. And if that's the, and if that's what the the response is going to be, then you know maybe we should accept the challenge. I'm not saying we have to, but if their response in the end, if this gets their attention, is we don't have the guts because you know someone that's going to respond to this, they're going to acknowledge to hashtag raw cleanse, and they're going to say something. It's going to be along the lines of us not having the guts. 
to watch Raw and at least try to understand the storylines going on there. If that's what's going to happen, then you know what I say? I say let's accept the challenge. Let's watch one, one week of Raw and try to, in our reviews, use our live stream reviews or whatever, try to understand what the storylines are going on there. Try to get an idea of what they're trying to do and accomplish. And if that's the case, if that's the case, so be it. So be it. But you know what? Hopefully that won't be the case because you know what? Hopefully hashtag raw cleanse does what hashtag fire rogue dog couldn't and that's get the attention of anybody within the wrestling business Alumni, Hall of Famers, legends, to help the WWE wake up and realize you're screwing up. Your ship, your flagship show is like the Titanic sinking further and further down before it hits the rock bottom. You need to do something, and you need to do something quick. So, again, hashtag raw cleanse is a good idea, but what? The, but the thing is. If it gets their attention, and it probably will, all it's going to do is get their attention to probably try to say we don't have the guts to watch Raw, or at least have the guts to understand the storylines. Because we're too blind, blind to, because we let our hardcore fanness blind us. That's what it's going to turn out to be, but hopefully not. But yeah, I just started giving my thoughts on it. Again, hashtag Raw Cleanse is jumping higher and higher in social media, so get it trending, get people talking about it. But that's all I'm going to really say on both the Becky Lynch storyline and the whole t- hashtag raw cleanse. I do apologize if I rambled a little bit and sounded like I <laughs> went off topic, but I am tired. I did work today. But let me know what you all think down below. Take your time in watching this, and I'll talk to you all later.